So ProGCAD is simply a CAD program called, you know, computer aided drafting. So for years and years and years, basically we all did board drafting. You guys are tired of board drafting, you're getting bored of it, no pun intended, right? So I'm gonna switch over to ProGCAD. It is, like I say, a generic program. There are other ones out there. AutoCAD's the big one. It costs thousands of dollars. The difference between them is it's just one company that's been established longer and they are the industry standard, therefore they charge more. To me, this program does the same thing. The commands are the same. A lot of stuff is text it, is you text or type it. So if you want to type line, you just type it and it does a line. If you want to type circle, you type circle, it does a, a circle. Okay? And the, they are very common between all the different programs. The point of a drafting program is to draw things precisely. And if you're drawing something small, right, you just draw it to scale. If you're drawing a house, you don't you draw it to scale on the screen, but when you print it out, you have to shrink it down so it fits on a piece of paper. And what I want to do this morning is show you guys quickly how to set up the program so it does what you want it to do. And there's a set of tutorials, so there's six assignments you're going to run through, and the gist of those tutorials is to get you to understand how to use the program and set it all up. So to start off with, this is the interface. Yours might not be white. Yours will probably be black. If you want it white, what you can do is you go to Tools, you go down to Options, and I will do Display and a Graphic Screen Color, and I can change it to whatever color I want. So if I change it to yellow, it would be yellow. Right? I'm going to leave it at white. If you want the dots and things, I'm going to show you how to do all that after. So don't start anything up right now. Just watch. So basically, the first assignment is setting up the basics. So if I go to Tools and I go to Drawing Settings, and I basically set up you know, coordinates, or sorry, what's called the input system. So I've got snaps. I've got grids. right? I've got sizes of the page. All these things need to be set up. I also have in here, under format, I have layers. And layers are things where what you do is you draw it, you dimension it, and then when you print it out, you can either print it out with dimensions on it or not. If you're doing a drawing for, let's say, a house, you might have the 2x4s for the guys that are going to hammer the 2x4s together or the walls together. You'll have the electrical layout for those, who are, or those people that are going to do the electrical. And you might have the um, plumbing as a separate layer. And therefore, when you print it out, you can print out separate layers for different types of people, depending on what you want. For me, you might actually use the laser engraver. So you've dimensioned it, but you don't want to print out the dimensions on the laser engraver. You want to make a part. So you turn the dimensions off and then cut out the part. Or you go to the metal shop and use a CNC plasma cutter and do that. So that's kind of where this program comes, and that's why you use layers. Now to start, all you would do is you're going to default a program, or default a drawing, so it works for you and for this class. So I go File, and I go New. And it's a wizard. I hit Next. Create an entirely new drawing. And this is the first assignment that you can either, I guess, watch this video, or you can actually just read. I hit next again. I'm going to do decimals. I could do architectural, so it's in inches and fractions and things. I can do it into scientific, which I can never understand anyway, so I'm not going to do it. right? Or fractional, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it as decimal. Uh, degrees, so this is now my angular units. So I can have degrees, I can have grads, radians. Again, I like decimal degrees because I understand them. Right? Hit next. I just hit next again, and then here I'm going to turn the grid on by default, the snap on by default, and I'm just going to turn this one called UCS off. Right? And I hit finish, and it just brings up another drawing. There's nothing there. All I've done is set up that the grid's on and things. Now I've got to go set everything. So I go to tools, I go to drawing settings, as I did before. The assignment is to set the snap to 0.25, set the grid or leave it at half. Down here it says display dotted grid in. So if I take this check mark off, I will have lines as a grid. If I leave the check mark there, I've got dots as the grid. By default, it's unchecked. So you want to make sure this is checked. Okay. 
Then I switch over, I'm going to go, uh, let's go limits. Limits is the size of the page. If I'm drawing this to scale as a house, my limit's got to be a couple hundred feet or 100 feet by 50 feet. If I'm drawing something small to fit on and it's to scale one to one, I want it to fit on the page. So for now, it's 11 by 8.5 because we're going to use letter size paper. Once the limits are set, I'm going to do what's called entity snap. Entity snap is when you go to find a line, you can you don't guess here. Everything's exact. So sometimes the lines are really in weird spots. So you use these things called entity snaps. And I can find an endpoint, or I can find the center of a circle or a midpoint. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So I got those set up. Okay? And that's basically all the ones I need to set up. So again, nothing shown. I go to Format, Explore Layers. And there's a set of layers that I want you to set up. So I would just hit, go up here, hit new. And let's say one layer is going to be border. And I want the border to be white. I want it to be a continuous line. Uh, another one might be construction lines. And you guys know construction lines because <coughs> I've done them with you. That color, I'm going to put yellow. And it's going to be a continuous line, sure. Okay. Next one I'm going to put is I will use center lines. Okay? And center lines define the center of a circle, right? Or the center of an object. So color, I'm going to use red. And instead of a continuous line, I'm going to use this center line right here. And I hit OK. And I'm just going to leave it at those for now. There's dimensioning lines you're going to add. There's text colored layers, sorry, layers that you're going to add. You're going to have multiple layers in there. And they're there for a reason is at different points in time you'll use them. And again, I'm doing this, this is called the default settings. Once you set this once, you'll never have to do this again. There was a question. Okay, yeah, I just spelt it wrong. So, now up here, those are my layers. Right? And down here, this is my snaps, my grid. So if I take the grid and I turn it off, it disappears. I turn it back on, it comes on. If I draw a line, okay, you can see how I'm jumping. See how it kind of snaps over to spots? If I take the snap and turn it off, now I just kind of move and I don't snap anywhere. So that's why snap is there. So I'm just going to leave it on. Okay. The last thing I need to set up is under format and it's uh, dimensioning styles. And what happens is, when it opens up, format dimension style, why is it not opening up? Uh-oh. Format, dimension, style. There we go. And in here, I have to set up the text for the dimensions. If I have the text set too small, and I have this scaled up really big, like let's say I'm doing a house, when I scale it down to fit on a piece of paper, you won't be able to see the actual dimensions. They're so tiny. Right? So you got to come into here and arrow size, I've got it set up. I think I'll leave it at that. And text size, I got to put the text size. Let's say I want the text size 0.2. And there's a couple other things I need to set in here, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Right? But that's where I would set the actual heights of everything. So defaults to the right stuff. So that's basically the template. And what I do then is I save the template. And when I start a new drawing, I just call that up, right? So to save it, I go File, Save As. The biggest thing is, please understand this is a network in this school. You can't save it to the local drive. I've got a program on here called Deep Freeze. When you restart the computer, it wipes out everything so that people can't just make all these changes to the computers. So you have to make sure you save it to your L drive, your student number. I just created one called CAD. Create a, a directory in your, under your student number called drafting, and then save it. And it asks you to save it as a template. So I've already created mine, and mine's called Imperial Template. And once I've saved it as a template, as again, as I said again, it just comes up, and you say, geez, I need to start a new drawing. I grab that, right? So then I save that, and I save it as, I'm not actually going to save it because I've got a good one there, and I'm done. That's the first assignment. The second assignment then is a border. 
And you just take that template and create a border. And when you're done on the second assignment, basically what you have, and I'm just going to go back to templates, you will have a border like this all set up. And from this point on, you just draw from that border and draw everything within that. Pardon me? Yes, that's a halibut. Do you have to have a halibut? No, you, you get to have a great big giant Oscar Meyer Oscar Meyer wiener. Okay? That suits your personality, Ryan. Oh, and I just recorded that too. I'll delete that. Anyways, so that's the generic startup to this program. Now, I'll just continue on a little bit and show you why you use stuff. So here's a box and I've got that box and what I've got it is I've put it on just a layer right now called dimensions. Okay, I probably don't want a box on the dimension layer. I probably want my dimensions. So what I do is let's say I go dimension and linear and I grab that point there and you can see how when I draw, see how that puts a triangle there? That's the midpoint of the line. When I go to the end of the line, you'll see it automatically puts a box there to say it's the end of the line. And I can do this and that's how long that box is. Okay. Now, because this box should be on a different layer, I can highlight it, just come up here, and let me put it on my object one. And if I hit escape, it's now black, it's on that layer. Now, if I want to print this box out and cut it out on the laser engraver or the CNC plasma cutter, all I would do is come into here and I go to dimensions and I just turn it off. Now I go and print it out. Now, the border, I would do the same thing, delete the border. All I'm left with now is that box. Because I don't want to print the border. And then I take it into the program to actually use the laser engraver or the, or the CNC plasma cutter. Okay? But to begin with, you need to actually have all the stuff there. Because in reality, you guys are drawing stuff for other people to make. And in this case, you can actually draw what they want to make, but they just take the drawing, remove all the other stuff, and take the physical drawing and actually use that drawing to cut out what they want to do. Right? So that's kind of the gist of it. If I draw a circle, you know, I can either click on circle, there's my circle, or I can type in circle. And watch now, if I get close to this, it'll automatically pick the center of the circle. And let me go there. Right? If I want to draw a line specific lengths, I could just type line. And let's say I start right here. And let's say I want to make a box, but the box is some funny numbers like I don't know, 2.32, I could go at 2.32 at an angle of zero, and you're watching down right down here where I'm typing, right? I hit enter, it goes there. Then I go at 2.32 at an angle of 90, and it would go up. At 2.32 at an angle of 180, it would go over. And then if it's I want to close it, I just hit C for close, and it closes it. So it's very specific. I can do at angles of 42.2 degrees. And when you're drawing something, as I said, that's very specific for somebody that they need to make, you use this program. How you would do that manually drafting is a lot harder. Right? You'd have to get out, you know, and, and you're guessing now. Right? But if you're doing something really high tolerance, this program is awesome for that. So if I want to delete stuff, I can just simply click on it and I delete the line. If I go from left to right, and I select like that in blue, it selects whatever is completely inside it. That's only that line. If I go right to left, and whatever touches that, it highlights. And then I can delete it. So there's all these little tricks. If I come down here, right, and I hit ortho. Ortho is one, when I hit type in line, that I click, and you can see I can only draw that way or up and down, vertical, horizontal. That's ortho, ortho. If I turn it off, now I can draw whichever way I want. So there's times when you want to draw something quickly. You don't want to have to sit there and guess stuff. You just turn ortho on, you draw nice straight parallel lines. Right? If I want to find, for example, I want a quadrant of a circle. So let's say I got line, and I want the qu that quadrant right there, and I don't want to guess. I go to this E snap, right mouse click, settings, and I want to start at a quadrant. And then now it'll pick that quadrant or that quadrant, and then I can go from there, whichever angle. 
if I want it to go tangent to something, I can go line. And I can put it, and I think I type in tan, tangent to that. And now what it'll do is it will keep it tangent to that. So there's all these different commands that you learn. Now, as I said, the point of the six assignments you guys are going to do is to learn all the, these commands. How to set it up, how to know what fillet is or trim. So for example, if I want to trim something out, let's say this, this um, line's too long, I could click on this one, I could right mouse click, and then I could just trim it off. If I wanted to fill it, make a radius, I could type in fill it, and radius this corner, and I would select this one, and that one, and it'll radius the corner. And it just continues from there. If I want to copy stuff, mirror stuff, array stuff, make 30 circles all exactly the same distance apart, there's all these commands to do that. So, fourth or fifth time now, the point of what the next six uh, exercises are, are to specifically learn the commands so that when you go to do something, you know how to do it. So when I get to an architectural unit, Curtis, and you got to draw the side of a house. I don't have to teach you how to draw. You just go do it. I will teach you how to do all the dimensioning and actual sizes and why you use this material and stuff. But the drawing side of it, you already know how to do. Make sense? So, any questions right now? Okay, so here's the way it works. You have the last assignment that you're working on.